In the fourth series of the video, we're going to have a look at power consumption, what power consumption is, and how to calculate it in any circuit. I've drawn a few circuits here, and we'll take a look. So we first need to get an understanding of what power consumption actually is. You may be familiar with the term watts, and the watt, as a unit of measurement, is the measurement of the total power consumed in a circuit. And that total power in a circuit can be worked out by knowing the voltage supplied to the circuit and the current that the circuit consumes. So I've got a little circuit here and it's running off a 3 volt DC power supply and we've got three LEDs. All of those LEDs require 3 volts and 20 milliamps. So this is a parallel circuit which means I can power all of these LEDs off of 3 volts. Now the next video will actually go on to explain series and parallel circuits but for this we're just going to focus on how to calculate the power in a circuit. So if I want to calculate the power in a circuit here I need to understand what's going on in terms of um, the voltage and the current flowing through it. So what I've got is a 3 volt power supply and I've got LEDs which consume 20 milliamps each. They're all labeled, so this LED consumes 20 milliamps, this one and this one. And together, that actually equals 60 milliamps. And you can actually see here, every circuit's brilliant at labeling the, the current flow and voltage in a circuit. So we've got, I've got everything here already. Um, so, but it's good to understand how that 60 milliamps there is derived. It's because we've got three LEDs in a parallel circuit. And in a parallel circuit, the, the current flow is added. So we've got three LEDs times 20 milliamps, which gives us 60 milliamps in total flowing through the entire circuit. There's a simple equation that I can use, and that is P equals IV. And all that means is power the power in the circuit is equal to I, which means current, times the voltage. So I know the voltage and I know the current, so the equation is simply this. The current is 60 milliamps and whenever you're calculating uh, current you need to be using amps in your calculation. So 60 milliamps means that I would write it as 0.06 amps. Okay, so I've got my 60 milliamps and all I need to do then is just times that by my 3 volts. So P equals the 0 0.06 amps or 60 milliamps times my 3 volts. And that gives me an answer here of 0 0.18 watts. You could also say 180 milliwatts. So that's how we find out the power consumed in our circuit and the last one, this one's slightly different. We're now wired in a series circuit. And like I said, the next video will explain a series versus parallel circuits completely. But bear with me for this one. We've got these LEDs in a series circuit now. All of these LEDs have required 3 volts to conduct 20 milliamps of current. So because they're in a series circuit, I now have... I've now had to supply 3 volts for each of these LEDs. So that means I'm now supplying 12 volts. So I've got 4 LEDs, each requires 3 volts, so I need to supply 12 volts to give 3 volts to each of them. So how do we work out the power consumption in this one? Well, it's exactly the same principle. I know that 20 milliamps is flowing through this circuit. The actual total sum of the current flowing through all of these is 20 milliamps because it's the voltage driving them this time. So I've got a 12 volt power supply. So I'll use my P equals IV equation again. So P is equal to 0 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps times the 12 volts. And as you can see here, I've got 0 0.024 watts or 240 milliwatts. And you can do that with 
anything at all. As long as you know the voltage that it runs off and the current that flows through the circuit, you can calculate the power consumed by any device in your house, whether it be a light bulb, a refrigerator, a washing machine, a lamp, you name it. So to make sure that you see the next video where we go into series versus parallel circuits, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and uh, leave comments. Do leave comments if you've got questions, because I'll certainly try to answer any questions you have.